are a forefront runner who's grappling with medial tibial stress syndrome, which is shin splints that occurs on the inside of the shin, just slightly above the ankle. And the main symptoms are usually diffuse pain along the inner portion of the lower shin, as well as some stiffness in the foot ankle complex. And when you're running, the pain is usually a little bad in the beginning, but it slowly eases up the longer you run, usually within about 10 minutes into the run, the pain drops off quite a bit. So if you have this problem, one thing that you might be doing wrong is you might be landing on your forefoot incorrectly and that you might be making initial ground contact either on your big toe or on the middle of your forefoot instead of on the outer side of the forefoot just under the fifth toe. It is well documented that based on a lot of observations, of elite runners who forfeit strike as well as habitual barefoot runners who forfeit strike that a proper forfeit strike landing and forefoot running involves making initial ground contact under the fifth toe and below this video in the description box I posted a link to a video that I did showing a clear-eyed view on how that looks. But how landing big toe first or on the middle part of your forefoot first during running may contribute to medial shin splints is according to a 2007 study in the journal Medicine and Science and Sports and Exercise, which is linked down below the video in the description box, landing in these two particular ways on the forefoot during running was found to put strong pressure on the medial forefoot or the middle of the forefoot and this rise in medial forefoot pressure forced rear foot movements or movements of the back of the foot outside a natural range into excessive eversion, which means the back of the foot shifted towards the midline too much. This movement led to excessive eccentric traction on the plantar flexors, which is a group of foot muscles that physically link up to the middle lower portion of the inner shin. Excessive eccentric traction of a muscle means the muscle is excessive excessively lengthening under a load and in the case of the plantar flexor muscles when the rear foot undergoes excessive eversion during running the study found that in this condition the lower leg excessively rotated inwards and this repeated rotational stress on the lower leg increased traction and torsion stress on the inner shin of which the damage of this included medial tibial stress syndrome so this is how striking on the big toe first or striking on the center of your forefoot first when running may put unusual overpressure on certain areas of the foot causing the rear foot to no longer hold firm which may in turn have an overstraining ripple effect up the lower leg that may bring about medial tibial stress syndrome more easily Conversely, landing towards the outer side of the forefoot just under the fourth and fifth toes when running may do a lot to reduce mechanical strain on the inner shin and therefore may improve the odds of avoiding medial tibial stress syndrome and may do so by accompanying more surface area of the foot for pressure to spread over and because it disperses impact pressure on a wider surface of the foot, there's really no point throughout the foot that gets over pressure delivered to it. And because of this, the rear foot won't be required to intensively shift outward or inward to absorb the excessive pressure that the natural movement range of the rear foot can't absorb. And from here, the medial shins might not be as vulnerable to high torsion stress and therefore medial tibial stress syndrome. So I just thought it would be worth noting that running related medial tibial stress syndrome may be under the influence of how impact pressure disperses over the forefoot and that impact pressure distribution over the foot is directly influenced by foot strike pattern and more specifically the part of the foot that strikes the ground first. To that end, impact pressure seems to spread better with the landing configuration of making initial ground contact under the fifth and fourth toes and because of this, running may become less mechanically draining on the lower leg and landing this way may provide a range of other benefits as well, which I talk about in the video that I just mentioned earlier, which is linked down below in the description box. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit the thumbs up button as well as the subscribe button if you haven't already, where you will stay more informed on forfeit strike running versus heel strike running. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Have fun out there on the roads and trails. Bye for now.